Hello, I'm Steve, and welcome back to Book 2 of the IELTS. For Lesson 1 of Chapter 3, we'll be discussing how to state facts and opinions. Although there is different functional language you need to use in IELTS, giving your opinion and stating facts is necessary to answer the interviewer's questions. Providing an opinion is always done before strengthening your answer with an example. The most accurate structure to use in giving your opinion is the PREP because it allows you to explain and support it. Some of the questions in part 3 are difficult, so use pausing vocabulary phrases or smartly change your speech rate. Opinionated questions come in two forms, a direct question or a yes-no question. If it's a direct question, you can state your opinion immediately. However, for a yes-no question, you have to tell whether your answer is yes or a no before stating a fact or an opinion. To express your agreement or disagreement to a yes-no question, you can use the following expressions. To introduce your opinion, you can use these expressions. You can also use adverbs of degree, such as really, strongly, absolutely and certainly to emphasise your points. As mentioned, giving opinions can be useful in any type of question, so make sure to vary your expressions. If you plan to use the question as your guide in introducing your opinion, do not forget to paraphrase. Take note, repeating the question in your answer is a no-no in IELTS. Here are some sample questions about stating an opinion. And of course, an example of a question about stating a fact. Explaining your statement is necessary in all parts of the test. Good knowledge and grasp of cohesive devices used in giving reasons will help you in this part. If you started with a simple sentence in the introduction, you have to use compound or complex sentence structures in your explanation. Here are some examples of reasoning cohesive devices that you can use. You'll need to support your answer so here are some supporting phrases that you can use. Remember, the purpose of each of these cohesive devices is so that you can accurately use them in giving reasons. On the other hand, when stating a fact, you might not need to give reasons, but give details instead. Take a look at these examples. Citing at least one example is a way to strengthen an answer. As you already know, there are many phrases you could use in giving examples. During the entire speaking test, it's possible that you'll give numerous examples. To vary your cohesive devices, you can use the following phrases. You have to take note of the verb tense you're using it should be in line with the event or occurrence you're describing in your example. Here are ways on how to support your opinion using examples. When giving an opinion, the examples expected by most examiners are often experiences related to the question and a past or current situation regarding the topic. However, when stating a fact, there should be a basis. It could be from the news, documentaries, commentaries or statistics to support your answer. Take a look at these examples. To clearly make a conclusion, you should use cohesive devices that signal the end of your answer. There are a lot you could choose from, 
Remember, not to state another idea in your conclusion. What you need to do is just rephrase your introduction in one or two sentences. Here are some examples of concluding words or phrases that you can use. Here are some examples of concluding an opinion or a fact. Here's an example of a question that requires stating an opinion along with its corresponding answer using the PREP structure. And here's an example of a question that requires stating a fact as well as its corresponding answer using the PREP structure. Remember to use your cohesive devices accurately to connect your ideas. It's not necessary to give an example for each reason, but it would be better to give an example that incorporates all of them. Remember, do not give a very short or very long answer. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye.